Mm, welcome, everyone. Uh, such a joy to see that film again. And I can see that many of you are entering the event right now. And we'll give it a moment until everybody joins. But I want to welcome you here on World Water Day 2021. And as we're seeing a few more folks entering the room, and before we get started, I just I just wanted to uh, to, to let y'all know that early this morning, just as the sun was rising, I, I felt like the need to wake up and head down to the river myself. And and for our evening tonight here, we have a, a, a beautiful vessel of water from the Aramasa River that that flows just lucky enough to live right beside it here, and as a, co a companion on this uh, journey tonight to remember why we're here, why, we're, why we've created this award um, to honor the, the incredible contributions of Dr. Hugh Whiteley and to recognize our new recipient this year, Nora Challoner. And we will, get, we will get started in just a few minutes. And I just wanted to remind, I'm sure many of us over this past year, I was reflecting that it was a year ago today that we were planning to host the original <laughs> event to recognize Hugh himself. And here we are a year later. Uh, we didn't host it that day on account of the pandemic being called this week a year ago. And we weren't ready to uh, pivot as the point is right now, but we figured that out in a few months we hosted this event. Likely now all of us have been on many, many, many Zoom events, but just just in case you haven't, or just as a reminder, I want you to let you all that that you let you all know that you've been muted. Um, but we do want to hear from you, so please uh, take a moment to use the chat box, introduce yourself, and let us know where you're joining from, and any thoughts or comments you want to add. Please continue to populate the chat box with that. And I also just wanted to let you know that captions are available for this event. It's, I think, a, like a great new function on Zoom. And on the lower part of your toolbar, you'll be able to see the live transcript. And if you click on that, uh, if you're having trouble hearing it, you can sort of read in real time what's happening um, along the space there. So uh, at another little reminder, at the end of our event tonight, which probably should broach right around the eight o'clock mark. I'm gonna invite you all to join me in a toast. So I will invite you to um, around eight to have a, a beverage of your choosing, some form of water that's preferred to you to have so that we can all make a toast to this beautiful day and to uh, Nora and to Hugh. And without further ado, we're gonna get going on this event. So I'm gonna pass it over to you, Deirdre. Thank you very much, Arlene, and uh, welcome everyone. My name's Deirdre Pike and I'm a board member of the Wellington Water Watchers. And it's my uh, privilege to just introduce uh, the uh, land acknowledgement that we're going to be uh, sharing together tonight. Uh, it's a video that uh, we're going to um, take in as a community and, and uh, of course, on this day, I think it's really important to uh, every time you hear land, maybe uh, to uh, whisper and water. We know it's part of it, but you know, um, uh, that's that's one way to uh, to take in this uh, really powerful land acknowledgement. The other is to really sit back and uh, that video, um, the movie I just watched. Uh, with you of uh, Hugh Whiteley's life talked about being grounded. And I want you to uh, feel grounded for the next five minutes as we um, share this uh, land uh, and water acknowledgement. It is narrated by someone named Bruce Weaver and it comes out of uh, a community of partners from the University of Guelph. And you'll see, uh, you'll see that at the end of it. Um, I would invite you to uh, acknowledge the territory on which you sit or stand tonight uh, as you uh, see, feel appropriate uh, as we go through uh, this time together. 
And so uh, let us just be grateful, especially those of us who call ourselves settlers, um, for the uh, ability to be here tonight and have this important time together. Guelph, known as Tadina Duni, the place where they built to the Mohawk Nation, on the shores of the Omnimosa River, as it is known to the Mississaugas, this place has many names that are not consecrated on colonial maps. We are on the traditional lands of Attawandran, Anishinaabek, and Haudenosaunee peoples, and on the treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit. This place is home to peoples who can trace their lineage here back thousands of years. We are within the jurisdiction of the two-row wampum and the dish with one spoon covenant. These are nation with nation agreements and they serve as reminders that all the people on this land are still accountable for the promises made by their ancestors. This land is a product of many stories, seen and unseen. It is shaped by the wind, the water, and the people that have flowed and continue to flow across it. It is one of the many meeting grounds of Turtle Island. It has been the stage for many dramas that have been forgotten, and many that are all too well remembered. But all of these dramas have played a part in building the life that we have today, with all of its privilege and all of its pain. Being honest and open about this history is central to the land acknowledgement. Land acknowledgements are not meant to instill guilt or to assert treaty rights. They are not lip service to institutional or governmental mandates, nor are they meant to simply convey sympathies or regret. They are a way for us all to feel more connected to the land that sustains us. They are a reminder of our responsibilities to the land and of our relationship to the natural world. They are meant to push us to educate ourselves about the history that has shaped our lives here so we can begin rebuilding relationships from a place of honesty. Land acknowledgements are meant to remind us that Canada was founded neither on pristine wilderness nor on empty space. Rather, it was built alongside and then on top of indigenous nations that existed since time immemorial. And also to remind us that those nations continue to exist and continue to have responsibilities to the land and inherit rights to determine their own futures and practice their own languages and cultures without discrimination or interference from other forms of government. The land acknowledgement highlights the importance that indigenous peoples place on kinship with land in a culturally responsible way and is a step towards building a future focused on understanding, respect, reciprocity, and a reconnection with the land and with one another. Finally, the land acknowledgement is a platform for real change and real commitments to be put forward. It is meant to break the silence that has left indigenous peoples and communities in Canada deprived of clean water, disadvantaged in educational opportunities, forced into housing and poverty crises, and destabilized by systemic racism and inequality. For settlers and visitors, the land acknowledgement should inspire questions like, what steps will Western institutions and organizations take to mend the privilege gap which began with colonization and is continued in so many of our present day policy? How have you benefited from colonization at the expense of the cultures, 
lives, and livelihoods of Indigenous peoples. What will your contributions be to reconciliation and a future focused on equity, reciprocity, and nation-with-nation -nation relationships? Our, our gratitude to uh, Ryan Matheson for that really beautiful and, and really new version of a, a very of a land acknowledgement very specific to the Guelph area that was shared with me a few weeks ago. And as, as water protectors here on these lands, uh, as, as folks aspiring to be water protectors here on these lands, it's become more apparent to me uh, over the years how critical it is to do that work in conjunction uh, with, with our constant work around decolonizing our frameworks. And so I'm grateful for, for all the expressions of these land acknowledgements and often they're from our heart and in a spoken way. And I'm really grateful for this visual because it's a powerful one. So I'm, I would love to welcome next uh, another board member of Water Watchers to Mana to, uh, to get the next piece started. Welcome to Mana. Thanks, Arlene. Happy World Water Day, everybody. Uh, I'm here to introduce uh, Hugh and a bit of the award. So the annual Hugh Whiteley Lifetime Achievement Award celebrates the activism, advocacy, and dedication of remarkable individuals who protect water in the Canadian Great Lakes Basin. Each year, the Water Watchers honor one per person whose passion and years of contributions to water protection transcend the ordinary, making a deep and lasting impact to water while inspiring the next generation of water protectors to consider what a lifetime of service to water could mean, what it could create, and what it could preserve. The first recipient was Dr. Hugh Whiteley himself, and now the award expands to honor more of the lifetime contributions of extraordinary water advocates in the Great Lakes Basin of Canada. To support and expand the legacy of award winners, a $1,000 donation will be made on their behalf to the water cause of their choice. Water Watchers commissioned the short documentary film called Hue, which was screened as the opening to this event, which we hope you enjoyed. Our goal in creating this award and in showing this film is twofold to honor Hugh's immense contributions and to also inspire a new generation of water protectors. We had a difficult decision to make this year as our nominees were all worth recognizing for their tremendous contributions uh, to and advocacy of these local waterways. And in a few moments, we will introduce Nora Chowner, our recipient for the 2021 Lifetime Achievement Award. But for now, we'd like to recognize the following nominees. Mike Nagy. Mike, as a founding member of the Wellington Water Watchers, uh, leadership demonstrates his true conviction to keeping water in public hands. During the past 20 years, Mike has dedicated himself to fight Nestle's water bottling operations, lobbied to embed water as a priority into Ontario's political parties and beyond, organized events to celebrate water while getting numerous festivals and, uh, and to adopt free public water programs for their patrons and rallied his network to combat the commodification of water, as well as to protect it from threats such as plastic pollution and unchecked development. In speaking from the heart and relaying water stories from his personal water journey, he has inspired many water supporters and connected water advocates more deeply to each other and the waters that sustain us all. Dr. Trevor Dickinson. Dr. Trevor Dickinson is one of the pioneer hydro hydrology and water quality experts and has inspired countless water scientists throughout his career. Trevor's research in the Great Lakes Basin goes back to the early 1970s when eutrophication of the Great Lakes was becoming a concern. He was a key member of the International Joint Commission's Pollution from Land Use Activities Reference Group, which is PLULARG as their acronym, that did landmark research on the Great Lakes water quality. His research is focused on runoff contributing areas, tempor temporal variations in hydrologic and soil erosion characteristics, targeted restoration of agricultural watersheds, multi-tier watershed management, and more. 
He has also developed a number of hydrologic and erosion models, GAMES being one of them, which uniquely identifies sediment contributing areas, thus making restoration initiatives very effective. In recent years, Trevor identified relative impacts of climate change and urban, urbanization on stream flow in Southern Ontario. Overall, he has published some 250 plus journal articles and presented at hundreds of national and international conferences, workshops, and symposiums. He was awarded a National Research Council Special Scholarship, an International Hydrological Decade Distinguished Lectureship, a Canadian Merit Award, an Ontario C Conservation Pioneer Award, and a Latournelle Leadership Award during his active research career. He was also recognized for his contributions to university teaching with the University of Guelph's John Bell Award and a Canadian 3M National Teaching Fellowship. So before we hear from Nora, we'd like to invite Dr. Hugh Whiteley to say a few words. Water Watchers created this award to honor the many years that Dr. Hugh Whiteley has dedicated to the advocacy of the waters of the Guelph area, which includes the rivers, the river valley lands, the wetlands, and of course the groundwater. Not only has Hugh been our go-to hydrologist for the past 14 years of Water Watchers' existence, but he has also been an inspiration to many for his tireless commitment to the protection of these natural features that are essential in maintaining a healthy ecology for all life that call these riparian areas home. Hugh has spoken often of the need to go beyond the modern human-centric worldview, which is embedded in maligned policies and poor political decisions that mistreat life-giving waters. He understands that our best thriving and that of all ecology will happen when we work within the intricacies and balance of natural cycles. And although meticulous and relentless in his advocacy, Hugh has always managed to do the work with a twinkle in his eye and lots of great stories. Welcome, Hugh. Thank you very much for the introduction. And I have successfully unmuted, I hope. I would like to spend a few minutes uh, expanding on one element of the award as it was uh, presented in the earlier description. And that element is the award measures achievement, not just on what an individual has accomplished as their contribution. It, I'm hopeful will continue to emphasize the achievement being awakening in a broader and broader range of people in our community, a sharing of responsibility for water. And this year's recipient, Nora Challoner, is an excellent choice because of that, because I feel that Nora's major achievement has been to build a lasting coordinated approach to water advocacy through her support for, first of all, Wellington Water Watchers and a useful aspect of having this award is that it's an opportunity for Wellington Water Watchers to come before the public and present itself in very rightful pride as being the community voice that brings water forward whenever there are opportunities for improvement. And the second group that Nora has been widely uh, supportive of and a major uh, contributor to its continued active role in Guelph is the Council of Canadians. So my uh, contribution this evening is to give emphasis to that aspect of achievement, the achievement of building in wider and wider circles, the feeling of commitment in individuals to being responsible. It's always a good opportunity to outline what I think the major issues where that responsibility should be exercised are. And my own personal engagement has been with river corridors and the expansion of the green belt that's being proposed at the moment is an excellent opportunity for people to support that aspect. But I'm 
also very concerned that the commodification of water, which was a topic that Nora and Council of Canadians and Wellington Water Watchers have been heavily engaged in, is a very large hazard. I'll give you a very specific example. The Canadian government requires quarantine for travelers, hotel accommodation quarantine for travelers. And there was immediately a lot of public complaints from people caught by the quarantine requirement that the hotels were not providing them with adequate food, which is a legitimate complaint. But they then said, and bottled water, as if providing bottled water was an absolute essential for community health. And that example of how commodification has come to distort the truth of the phrase, water is life, is a very grave concern for me. And I'm happy that people like Nora Challoner are continuing to build support for the correct view, which is water is a spiritual gift and we have to treat it in that fashion. So I'm very pleased the event is happening. Congratulations to Wellington Water Watchers for giving prominence to the personal engagement of every citizen in water matters. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sylvia Pivko, and I'm a member of the board of Wellington Water Watchers. I have the distinct honor of introducing our 2021 Hugh Whit Whiteley Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, Nora Challoner. And building on what Hugh has mentioned um, and what Tamana has mentioned about the award itself, uh, it does celebrate the activism, the advocacy, and dedication of remarkable individuals to protecting water in the Great uh, Lakes Basin. Nora is a retired public health nurse and has been a leading advocate for water and environmental issues for well over 20 years and has been a central and, as I understand, humble factor in establishing and bringing people to some of our community's most vital water and environmental advocacy organizations. Over her life, she has contributed to water protection through various campaigns against pipelines, mega quarries, development, water privatization, and water bottling, to name a few. Moreover, she has continually pushed the education, the engagement, and empowerment of others, much as Hugh highlighted is his desire for the award to embody, um, to find their own voice in environmental advocacy. In the mid 2000s, she was the chair of one of the most vibrant and active local chapters of the Council of Canadians in this country. Local water issues approached with a global perspective was a central issue of the Council of Canadians chapter campaigns and actions and a central passion of Nora's. She seemed to always be apparently in campaign mode, sharing information and updates on emerging issues alerting people to upcoming actions and drawing people and their networks into planning and collaboration. And for many, Nora was the go-to person in town for all manner of water advocacy and action events. People were always inspired by how she never won to grab the mic or the spotlight connected with people, bringing them together and supporting them in taking action. In 2006, before Wellington Water Watchers came into being, the City of Guelph initiated a renewal of its 50-year water supply master plan, which explored options for accommodating water demand of a rapid population growth. And one option that was considered was a, a construction of a water pipeline to Lake Erie. Many Guelphites didn't know uh, anything about that master plan or the pipeline proposal until they started seeing stop the pipe lawn signs springing up around town and started asking around. And before long, people started hearing 
more and more people talking about it, about the ecological destruction that its construction would entail, the amount of energy that would be consumed in pumping that water, the sheer financial costs of building and maintaining it, and above all, the disincentive it would create for prioritizing water efficiency and local water autonomy over growth and development. So that Stop the Pipe campaign was a direct result of a meeting Nora held at her home and with a small group of University of Guelph students following a public meeting about the pipeline that was organized by the local Council of Canadians, Classic Nora. With municipal by-election approaching, the Council of Canadians stopped the pipe and others escalated their actions, making delegations to City Hall, speaking at community events, distributing lawn signs, and by late fall, the pipeline option was off the table, declared too controversial by master plan authors. And since then, activists in Waterloo Region have looked to Guelph and to Nora specifically for guidance in resisting pipeline proposals. Um, and to this day, the pipeline option, while not completely gone, remains a highly touchy idea in Guelph. Just as the pipeline issue was heating up, people in the community were also beginning to realize that Nestle Waters had set up its national headquarters and bottling plant in Aberfoyle. And by spring 2007, an action group had begun to form around the issue. And Nora, among others, turned some of her attention to that too. While not alone in her efforts, as usual, between the profiling credibility she brought to the issue personally and through her involvement, in the local chapter and national networks of the Council of Canadians, the momentum she rolled into the issue from Stop the Pipe and her direct personal leadership in establishing a vision for the organization, building up its first campaign. Nora's involvement was foundational to establishing what has become our region's leading advocacy organization. Nora was one of Wellington Water Watchers founding board members. And I just described all of that, and it only occurred over two years in the life of Nora Schalliner. And then there's her contributions to the water conservation programs of the Guelph International Resource Center, her involvement in Guelph, uh, urban forest friends, and who knows what else around that same time, plus the 15 years of tireless effort since then, uh, culminating now in her contributions to the realization of the vision of the Yorkland's Green Hub. Nora and others successfully also fought the mega quarry proposed for Melanchthon Township. They partnered with colleagues of the University of Guelph to develop rain harvesting systems. And through that work, they fought unsuccessfully, alas, the privatization of Guelph Hydro. They organized to protect the provincially significant wetland bisected by Laird Road, home to countless uh, migrating frogs and toads and salamanders. And they co-organized conferences featuring, featuring sorry, internationally renowned speakers, including a Water is Life event at the University of Waterloo. And the list goes on and on and on. Now, as you've heard earlier, Nora has named Yorkland's Green Hub as the organization to receive the $1,000 donation for this award. Yorkland's Green Hub aims to create for Ontario's public domain a self-sustaining education, demonstration, and research hub at the former Ontario Reformatory site in Guelph. Nora has an utterly inspiring way of connecting with people bringing them together, supporting them, and taking action. Through the years, she has made a deep and lasting impact to water while inspiring successive generations of water protectors. Hers has truly been a life of extraordinary water advocacy and activism in the Great Lakes Basin. And so we are honored to present to her the 2021 Hugh Whiteley Lifetime Achievement Award. And I invite Nora now to speak. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I cannot, I, I, 
I am amazed that you even got the tree toads in there that we were saving at night in the dark with our flashlights crossing a road. Oh, well, you know what? It's a, it's a little overwhelming. I had no idea that I've been this busy until you've added this all up. And I think you pretty well hit everything. My husband's sitting here laughing. Um, however, I have... Uh, I have a few notes, but I think kind of I should I should probably just um, thank you and uh, cut them in half. Anyway, Hugh Whiteley has been equally busy in his life, and every now and then we would intersect on some of these issues. I remember Hugh standing on setting on a podium down in the middle of Guelph when we tried to fight proroguing of government. And so with, with a focus on pierogies and he pulled everybody together and uh, we hundreds of us marched off and ate pierogies and had great speeches. So yeah, there's, there's been a lot of fun in a lot of these things too. And I have to say, it's a great honor for me to, to receive this award. And especially on behalf of the current project I've been focused on for the last several years. Um, I, see, I see names across the top of my screen that are listing friends in Brazil and in Kitchener and all over the place. And water brings us all together. Unistic organizations I've been part of since I retired 30 years ago. And it sounds like I've been bouncing from one to another. But there's a common denominator for them all, which you named, and it is underpinned by the awareness of the importance of water to all of us, to all species. My working days in public health detailed the importance of cleanliness and infection, but it did not equip me with the science background that our groups needed to understand through the science of hydrology. Hugh Whiteley, being a committed member of the Council of Canadians, even before 20 years ago, was a ready source for increasing our understanding. His generous sharing of time and energy was basic to any progress we made. We needed answers to many questions as we would weave through the thickets of misinformation that often came at us from the water-hungry corporate world in need of profits. 20 some years ago, a farmer in Puss Lynch came to that public meeting of the little chapter locally to report a sudden creek diminishing and lack of fish in the creek for the first time ever since a big company moved in next door and drilled its well to a depth below her well. So that's when I met Mark Goldberg, Mike Nagy, and Hugh Whiteley, and we all came together and it, it's, been a, it's been a journey. So although my background in public health, nursing was science-based, in the 1950s, it was taken for granted that water was abundant and clean and a public good. But now we're aware of the phenomenon of corporate water taking and selling. And this theft from the public domain has spread like a cancer into so many communities here and abroad a totally unnecessary frivolous product, the plastic water bottle. Another one of my early groups was Guelph Urban Forest Friends. And when it formed around that kitchen table, which looks now like we should auction off and guild, <laughs> um, two then three people were around that table. And it was with the understanding that trees and their shade were an important part of livable cities. Like oasis in deserts and the world, no trees, no oasis, no water. Little trees not being the same as big trees. And the science of trees underground has mushroomed to include the many connections they have beyond our streets to the health of our waterways and groundwater. It was Hugh Whiteley who could explain the need for protected riparian areas along the waterways. I didn't know what riparian areas were. Trees were involved. Land use practices could destroy functioning creeks. It was Hugh we could turn to for the science and explanations we needed. 
since gathering pollywogs in the Irvin River in the Alora Gorge as a child with my brothers and sisters, and I think some of them are listening now, to watching Hurricane Hazel raging through the little village of Grand Valley, where we lived later, and on to the many last decades of my life in Guelph, I've been immersed in love of the rivers, streams, and wetlands of the Grand River watershed. The great realization that everyone in our fair city is dependent on the water below us is a lesson that will always need to be taught here. The groundwater that flows through the taps in our homes is not finite. The newcomers to this city need to understand much how we can protect it for future generations in these times of climate stress everywhere. When I lived for a few years in Toronto, we never had to worry about the amount of water for our taps. Lake Ontario is deep and cold and huge, lots of water. But inland, away from the Great Lakes, you realize that the streams and creeks and rivers run into those Great Lakes after being replenished by snow melt and rainfall that is not severe, that also can replenish the groundwater below us before leaving our area on its way to the ocean. I mention this since there is much study on the science of water today. How do we use it? How do we share it? You're here today because of your awareness of the importance of citizen groups to protect what is dearest for all. The biggest problem we have today is climate change in action. Our fossil fuel emissions continue to rise and every government has a plan. But where is the action to the plan? Fossil fuel emissions must fall. Habitat loss and heat and storms must be reduced. You're all engaged in this struggle, this challenge. You know it is often hard to act beyond our comfort levels, but we must be strong. Share that thought in public. Write that letter to the people with power. Share your stories and passion through supporting local volunteer groups that challenge for change. We know the path forward. We need to maintain the challenge to all of our institutions of power, schools, universities, governments of all levels. We know the plan to drop the emissions. We don't need another plan. We need the boldness of action on the plan. And we need targeted le legislation in that plan and regulation. And we need to keep get those greenhouse emissions down as quickly as possible. Our biggest challenge, all of our groups, is to continue to push them to act. Together, the powers that be. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Let, let us be led by the Indigenous water protectors to the reverence for water to speak over and over again until we turn this corner into government action and get the course reset that we need to correct our excesses. We know we can build new lifestyles. COVID has taught us that. Water protection is our common thread. Such good people come together on this journey. Join groups around you. Like compound interest, it will compound your passion and your joy and the results in the celebration of life. Spring is here, the robins are singing, Listen to the salutation of the dawn. Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. The Yorklands Green Hub thanks you so much. This money will be put to good use. We, for those of you who don't know about us, please go and visit the site. It's a wonderful publicly owned provincial um, property that is for sale and we are seeking to be a partner in that ownership. We have our partnership proposal on our website on the front page. And right now we are starting an April walkathon there 
which you can take part in on your own. It's for the whole month of April. Get some sponsors and get out there and enjoy these beautiful, beautiful scenic views of meadows, streams, ponds, wetlands that all lead down to the Great Lakes eventually. This part of the watershed is what we are focused on. We want to keep this former Ontario Reformatory for public enjoyment and a model education and research center for sustainable environments. Our website also has detailed information about its history, about how to contact us, about how to get involved, about how to take over my job as chair, about being a board member. Any, there are things for everybody to do. And uh, I'm of an age where it is necessary for younger people to step up and take on a bit of this. So thank you so much again. Wonderful to see all your names and many I don't know, but those I do know, I wish we could all have a great group hug. <laughs> so duty of care for all of us, caring for this planet starts with water. Thank you, Arlene and everyone. Thanks, thanks, Nora. Thanks very much. This is uh, Rob Case here. Uh, I don't know if people can see me, Rob Case. Uh, um, thanks for those words, Nora. Um, always inspiring and you know I've made it a philosophy since I got to know Nora I think in the early 2000s it turned out that when Nora suggested that there's a cause worth getting involved in and that there are good people involved in it she was always right uh, and I, I've made it my philosophy to kind of do what Nora tells me to do that way um, I think uh, we've all experienced your generosity Nora you, you said that uh, you had no idea that you'd been so busy um, well I've seen you at a lot of different events you know to the point where if Nora Challenger is not there it's not, I'm not clear if it's a real legitimate event or not. Uh, but also I'd have to say that my experience with, of you is that you've never been too busy to take the time to talk to just a guy like me about what's going on and to introduce you to your vast networks. You're very, very strategic in connecting people to the right people. Uh, I think we are all inspired by your perseverance. Um, and uh, uh, my job was to congratulate you uh, I think I feel more like uh, I want to uh, thank you on behalf of the Wellington Water Watchers and all of us here for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. It's a very, very well earned uh, award. I'm just so thrilled to be here, to be part of seeing this happen. And it's nice to see you, Nora. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, and Richard as well. Um, there are quite a few of you out there, in fact, who I really I know through Nora. Um, uh, and we've developed separate relationships. Some people I just know a little bit. Um, let's see, Lulu's here from KW. I've met a couple times through Nora. Uh, that's been, uh, I just feel that what people have been saying uh, so far it just reflects my experience of you and, and uh, appreciate it very much. Congratulations also to our other nominees um, uh, who uh, also, it just tells, shows you how deep the bench is in uh, around uh, this area when it comes to water advocacy. Uh, very, very strong nominees, uh, but I'm, I'm congratulate you, Nora, for um, well-earned recognition. Uh, my other job uh, then is to introduce um, our next um, component, uh, spoken word artist. Uh, I want to introduce uh, EKM, uh, is a settler poet and a physicist living on the, the traditional lands of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit River. She likes writing about the remarkable experience of physically existing in the world and practicing being kind here, here. So over to you, EKM. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm EKM. Um, I'm not originally from here. I'm originally from Ottawa. So I've had you know the, the good fortune of growing up by a few different water systems in my life. So I grew up near the Ottawa River then I came to Guelph for my undergrad and my master's, and now I'm living in Toronto, right by Lake Ontario. So um, I'm going to read a poem that I wrote. Um, it's about, I've also, I've also had the, the really good fortune of, in my studies and my travels, being able to see different parts of Canada and relate to those waterways as well. Um, and yeah, this is just about how how I related to some of the different bodies of water that I've grown up around and been lucky enough to see. 
floating on my back in the ocean at night under northern hemisphere stars, even flushed with Vancouver city lights, I feel small, like collapsing into a perfect point with no dimensions. I almost stay with the feeling of being so small, so tenuously held by the gravity of this wet rock that I could tumble accidentally into the atmosphere or out of it into the star-dusted void. But Earth holds the ocean and me steady, no matter how much the stars dance for us. If I could let myself feel it all, I might find something close to peace. But I can't, and I don't, and I tuck my knees and skim my arms to remind the ocean I am here. Don't let me sink, or maybe don't let me go. I grew up by a river. The slow sloshing of this ocean and the slower tumbling of the stars give me more unease than peace. The specific at the beach speaks too slowly for my impatient ears to understand. And I remember the Atlantic, screaming whitewater noise against rocks in time with my heartbeat a resonance that sings in me, a language I learn from the rapids. Peace for me comes in the joyful break of water that is more crest than wave on rocks that do not pretend to be soft under its touch, even after all these years. The rush of new melt water down the hill and into the storm drain, chattering over two season old leaves and scattered gravel didn't teach me this slow tongue. Maybe I should find a river instead, find a conversation that wants to go somewhere, but even then, the Atlantic is where my home waters rush to, running east, bracing the turning of the earth and winning. But this side of the great divide, rivers come to rest here, where the waves sing not like heartbeats, but like breath, quiet and slow. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ekam. I'm so pleased you were able to join us here this evening too. And just to bring in, um, you know, beautiful, inspiring words to, you know, this beautiful intersection of advocacy and art and where it all meets together, like in our heart spaces and in our actual relationship to water. And I loved in that poem that you shared a reference to, you know, a personal relationship of, that you have to to some waters that are special to you and I'm, I'm recognizing that in myself and probably for each one of us on this um, event this evening there's probably if we if we like you know probably doesn't even take much to go deep into a place where we have a personal relationship with a body of water and I, I would just like to invite you in this moment to see if you can just close your eyes for just a moment and consider um, whether, whether it's the body of water that currently nourishes you and provides life for you, like in proximity to you, or if it's some uh, memory from some time in your class, past, some place that is just so special to you. We each have one of those in, in our lives, possibly multiple of those in our lives. And remembering that this is really why we do this work. So I'll just take a moment on this recognition of World Water Day to just like have a moment of reflection on that special place. Yeah, thanks for joining me in that. And, you know, I, I remember um, we hosted an event last September uh, called Watershed 2021, where we were, in, in, in my humble estima estimation, given a couple of really clear, direct, um, I'm calling them our marching orders if, if we are to consider ourselves water stewards on these stolen lands. Most of us here are of settler origin, I imagine. And that part of it um, must start at the very beginning. There were two very clear uh, marching orders. One was to deepen our personal relationship with water, to remember those places and those sources of life that actually sustain us and that we are in relationship with. And that's uh, our, our second marching order was at every possibility to center indigenous sovereignty on these lands um, and the peoples who've lived here from time immemorial who uh, knew and know and will know into the future the ways of being to actually um, sustain uh, our existence here. And I, I'm so grateful that in the recognition of these awards, 
um, that that a lot of that a lot of that reference to the sacred nature of water I hear and I've always heard it in Hugh's words um, and, and that was a huge part of the reason why this the recognition and the origin of this award in honor of Dr. Hugh Whiteley came to being because of that beautiful ability to cross those worlds um, recognition of the need for the important uh, analysis of the science as well as the recognition of the sacred nature of water and I've always also heard and been inspired by Nora for recognizing that same essence, that it is our relationship that must guide us in this work. So I, I, I mentioned at the beginning that I, I wanted to, to host a toast. And what I'd like to do now is to invite you all um, to click, if you haven't, maybe you've been watching on a gallery view, to go up in the top of your Zoom meeting and click on the view button and choose the gallery so that you can see everyone present here. I'm gonna do that myself. And we can see lots and lots of folks and we can scroll back and forth and see all the beautiful faces of folks joining us from all over. And thank you everyone for joining us on this, on this day. And I hope that each one of you has something. I have some of our beautiful well water. I live here in the, in the village of Eden Mills and we have glorious well water here. And I'd like to propose a toast. I'm gonna mention a few things and then after we can raise a toast. So the first is to uh, a toast to the waters that sustain each one of our lives and to all of life in all of the locations that we currently call home. And the second is to recognize that this day as World Water Day is actually a reminder that every day is World Water Day and that we cannot live without it any single day. Uh, to the immense and incredible contributions of, of Dr. Hugh Whiteley for the inspiration behind this award and to all of the other folks who were nominated and are, are so rightly deserving as well. And we'll pop you back in there for future years. And lastly, and certainly not least, to Nora Challoner, for your unbelievable dedication to this, to this area, to this watershed, to this community, and to all that you hold precious and dear. Would you join me in a toast? Cheers. All right. So I don't know about you, but I'm looking out my window here and the, the sun has set and it's getting a little bit dark. And uh, I think we've done what we intended to do on this evening. So thank you for taking time out of your day to join us and gratitude to all of you for recognizing this important day and, and blessings to you and may the water continue to nourish and serve you and may you continue to nourish and serve the water and blessings and good evening, everybody. I'll just say it's such a gift to see uh, you, Nora, and uh, Richard, and uh, so many other good people. Hey, Nora, Hi. Mike, congratulations, fantastic. Love you like a family member. And uh, Monarch Butterfly, Nora, you can catch Monarch mm -hmm. Butterflies, probably still does it at her back here, too. <laughs> One of her billion accomplishments. <laughs> Hi, Nora. I just want to say hi from Waterloo. And uh, we love you. We miss you. We're still keeping busy at this end, stopping quarries, and uh, doing all kinds of great things to get water source protection as the number one priority. And I just really want to say thank you for everything. We love you. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Hi, Nora and Richard and everyone. It's Bobby from Cambridge from way back when. Lovely to see you all. You do amazing work. I do live in Kitch in Cambridge, Preston, Preston, Cambridge, by the confluence, by the river. I was just down there today. It's wonderful. Um, my heart is often in Guelph, I must say. I lived there a long time. So uh, I really appreciate what you do. And I'm glad to be here today.
um, Nora and Richard, congratulations to both of you. Uh, behind every successful woman, there is an understanding and supportive <laughs> man. Um, Nora and I first met back in the uh, early 2010 area uh, when Nora joined the Heritage Working Group of the Grand River Conservation Authority. And in 2015, she and the group from the Yorkland Green Hub chaired the Heritage, annual Heritage Day workshop, very successful event in February in, in Guelph. Um, she made her presence known. She, people, more and more people, we had over 200 people out uh, for that day. And the people know what the Yorklands Green Hub is all about. They know who Nora is. And uh, congratulations, Nora, on behalf of the former group of the Heritage Working Group of the GRCA. Congratulations. Congratulations, Nora, from your big sister in Huntsville. On behalf of the family, we're so proud of you for all you've done. We all got to go swimming one of these days. <laughs> and everybody, <laughs> if Nora invites you out for a cup of coffee, you know you're going to commit yourself to something that she's involved in because she's irresistible. End of message <laughs> or warning. <laughs> I miss Nora so much. Uh, she, as I said before, was my my myself my husband our first very first friends in wealth and since day one she has been this advocate for water and trees and the monarch butterflies and everything that we need so it's always a pleasure to somehow be in touch with her and uh so i'm very very happy to be celebrating this award and uh, I just want to send all my love to her and Richard. And uh, it's nice to see you all beautiful people from Wealth. So that's it. <laughs> uh, hi. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, thank Nora for being a, a big part of the Grand River Environmental Network. I think she, as a founding member, really helped to launch our local actions here quite a bit. We also have... Um, her influence with Save Our Water locally here as well, where we effectively have stopped a quarry pit recently. And um, it's amazing how many groups she inspired. Uh, I know she helped folks in Tiny Township. She helped Food and Water First, who used to be End Act. And uh, she has touched so many groups beyond the scope of, of just her Guelph community. And it's, she's really a, a historical legend in my view for the, the growth of the community movement and the social cohesion created around it, it has a lot to do with her. She was a key figure for building the social cohesion of source water protection throughout Southwestern Ontario. Then I really want to thank her for that. I would like to congratulate Nora too. Uh, this is Sue Reachin. And Nora was the founder of Guelph Urban Forest Friends many years ago in response uh, to the city desperately needing a bylaw to protect our trees. And as you all know, that happened. Nora kept the group going and then she announced one day, no, she had other things to work on. <laughs> and we had to take over and miss our dear Nora. Uh, but she has been a great supporter of trees. She still runs programs for kids in schools where they learn about trees. And uh, Nora is just the best when it comes to getting people involved, keeping us going and being a support behind the scenes. As well, I claim her as a neighbor and a friend and I consider myself blessed to have her in my life. So thank you, Nora, on behalf of Guff. All the best. Happy World Water Day. Lovely evening, everyone. Uh... Take care.